the automation plan report that we're currently working on um, is located in the development folder. Um, in your case, seeing as you're going to play an active role in the implementation of uh, um, the mode and the interfaces, you might want to pay particular attention to the things that are being um, being highlighted in here. Now, you will notice once you read this that uh, there's nothing complex in terms of what we are doing here. Um, if you remember discussions we had in 741, for instance, in terms of the different types of data types, um, the only data types we're dealing with here is uh, categorical data, really, uh, and numeric data. So that should be trivial stuff here, right? Because transformation of those sorts of um, data types is not really that complex. Um, what makes the project particularly interesting, though, is that um, the... So we are working towards trying to implement models that will essentially, for starters, enable ZMD to be able to predict or to forecast where they're using their uh, current in-house zones that they've come up with. Um, so they essentially segment Zambia into three zones, depending on a particular time of the year. So for instance, between uh, October, November, and December, which is this period, weather will be forecast using these three regions here. Um, and then once we, or once we get into January, February, and March, the boundaries of the regions will tend to shift, right? Um, so it changes to this. So, so in essence, we, we, what we're going to do is uh, work towards implementing models that we enable ZMD focus where they're using these internal regions. But in addition to this, there, um, there are so-called agroecological regions, right? Um, these are static, really. So we have these four regions here. So we'd want to implement a separate model that we enable ZMD to be able to focus whether based on these regions, if they wish to. Although they explicitly stated that what they currently use are the in-house um, in -house models. In addition to this, um, we we are meant to work towards um, um, implementation of models that we enable ZMD to um, predict or to focus whether down to the district, um, to the district level. Now, at, at, at the moment, obviously, this, this uh, I'm just going to zoom in here, this won't really be that useful to ZMD because it turns out that um, the, there are a number of, um, there are a number of districts which don't uh, have any weather stations, making it difficult for us to, to be able to, uh, uh, you know, focus weather or predict weather based on historical data. But, but the thinking here is that with time, ZMD will, uh, will obviously set up weather stations in, in, in these districts. And once they get to a stage where they accumulate sufficient data, they should be able to, to make use of this, this sort of model. So, so in terms of the model implementation part, that's it. I mean, the other things that you find in here, the, the usual uh, machine learning centric things like, uh, you know, how the training and, and testing data sets are going to be prepared, you know, how the, um, the, the models are going to be, um, uh, how the, the, uh, the models will be interfaced with uh, end user interfaces. Um, because if you remember just implementing this black box uh, is, is not, sufficient, right? Your end users will expect some aesthetically pleasing interface that, be able to, that they'll be able to use to interact with the model. Um, so which brings us to the other discussion of the platform itself. Um, the, the idea, the details are not really uh, there yet in the automation plan report, but we are also meant to, um, to create a, uh, to create uh, visually appealing interfaces. Uh, I would like to think, correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Nyerenda, I haven't had a chance to look at uh, some, of the, some of the reports, sample reports that were sent through. Uh, uh, but by sample reports that they currently use. Uh, but the thinking here is that uh, would would have to come up with uh, typographical maps or something that would be used to um, to uh, present the information. Um, I, I'm not sure if I've left out anything, Dr. Nurenda, Dr. Piri. I, I think that should be enough as a, 
as a very brief and broad overview, uh, but of course the details, um, you know, they say the devil is in the details. The details are in the reports here. So the automation plan report, which is in the development folder, the situation analysis report, which is in the situation analysis folder, and the inception report, which is in the inception folder. All right. Oh, and I see Francis just joined us here. Okay. Hi, Francis. Um, I do. Yeah. Uh, I think so, Dr. Yeah, I was, I was going to mention that again, you find in the uh, situation analysis report and indeed also in the, um, in the automation plan report that there are other variables, right? So uh, besides, um, besides these um, characteristics associated with uh, if I can go to the automation plan report, the characteristics associated with the weather stations. So things like uh, GPS coordinates, um, you know, the district and the province where these weather stations are located because the, the coordinates would, would, like for instance, if we're implementing a model that is meant to predict weather using the OND zones, for instance, obviously um, um, predicting, predicting or focusing weather in the region that is in green here entails that we, we, only, um, we only make use of data associated with weather stations located in here, right? So we'd be interested in, 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 in things like, um, of course, we've already provided a mapping. I was going to say GPS coordinates, but we already have details. We've, we've, we've actually derived um, um, the actual specific locations here. So we have a mapping between the weather stations um, and which region, like which OND region they belong to, which JFM region they belong to. So that information is already there. Um, but also in addition, um, we also have uh, characteristics like the type of weather station. So whether it's an automated weather station and manual weather station. And in time, in fact, once you read through the situation analysis report, you will grow to appreciate the distinction that exists between the automatic weather station and the manual weather station. Um, the manual weather stations, for instance, uh, most of them have been around for a very lo long period of time. We intend to actually primarily make use of them. A number of automated or automatic weather stations uh, were only recently commissioned, making it difficult for us to, to use them as sources of, um, of data because we don't have sufficient data. A key, um, a key thing um, that you probably uh, find out from the situation analysis report is that um, the process that they go through involves them using, I think, a minimum of uh, 30 years worth of data to forecast weather. So if you're wanting to forecast weather in, in 2021, you'd have to go back 30 years. Now, if you have weather stations that were uh, commissioned, let's say five years ago, 10 years ago, uh, it doesn't make sense to, to include them. But of course, one of the interesting things we are wanting to do is to experimentally show them that perhaps uh, we can get away with using historical data dating back 10 years or five years or something. So these models, again, would have to take into account characteristics like the type of weather station, right? So whether it's an automatic weather station or, um, or manual weather station. Uh, I think that's enough of an introduction. I'll let Dr. Piri or Dr. Nurenda chip in.